Good evening, brethren. My name is Latara Burley, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. May we please silence all electronics and cell phone devices before we get started. Welcome to a lecture given by the Tampa class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Kriflett Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Tampa branch was established in the year 1996. The dean of the Tampa branch is Dr. Joel Turner, and our president is Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a title. Elohim is a divine title. <laughs> I'm sorry. That means that Elohim is a title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in the alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on the chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart, to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son. The, a super incorporeal being is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh let the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
The primary constitution and aims of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh is to, I'm sorry, seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, where Satan and his demons operate in the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of times. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among man, whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Okay, can we please have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Kara Miller, and there will be a musical selection by Dr. Sherry Williams. The scripture lesson today is John, the fourth chapter, read by Dr. Sherry Williams. And our readers are Dr. Sherry Williams and Dr. Cynthia Smith. Good evening. Let's bow our hearts and minds. Thank you, Ashwa, once again for bringing us together. We ask that he open our minds this evening to be in touch totally with him and the message he's trying to convey to us, to our speakers this evening, and that he keep us always strong in this gospel. With that, I'll say hallelujah. 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 <clears throat>
Good evening. I will be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. John, the fourth chapter. When therefore Yahshua learned that the Pharisees had heard that he made and immersed more disciples than John, though Yahshua himself immersed not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Shechem, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Yahshua therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. While his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy food, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahshua said unto her, give me a drink. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria. Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Elohim, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drink thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Yahshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yahshua said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yahshua said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that saith thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship? Yahshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. For Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, and when he is come, he will tell us all things. Yahshua said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what seekest thou or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water spot and went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Messiah? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meantime, his disciples prayed him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said unto them, I have food to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Yahshua said unto them, My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet 
four months and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And the reaper receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And therein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Messiah, the savior of the world. Now, after two days, he departed thence and went into Galilee. And for Joshua himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own country. Then when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Joshua came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Joshua was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Joshua unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, sir, come down, ere er, my child die. Joshua said unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Joshua had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to recover. And they said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Yahshua said unto him, thy son liveth and himself believed and, the, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Yahshua did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. That was John, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. I would also like to um, extend a welcome to our brethren that's visiting with us tonight. Our first speaker will be from the PIDMR, Colin Trotter. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Colin. Welcome. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to be too long, but what I will say. Uh, is that I'm very thankful to have to to be here, and uh, I'm just going to lay a, a brief foundation. <clears throat> um, we teach in the uh, true and correct name of our heavenly Father Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. These three are one, and it's. A supernal, it, it, it's a supernal nature at work. Um, uh, just as the Creator has three names, so do you also have three names. My name is Colin Andrew Kelly Trotter. Um, the Andrew Kelly is hyphenated, of course, but I have, I, I, or as you can see. Uh, we ha I have three names, uh, first, middle, and last name, but I'm just one person. And just like that, yeah Yahweh is just one Yahweh. It's not Yahweh, you know, 
up above the sun, moon, and stars as the church world believes. And then Elohim, we don't know where he is. And then he, Yahshua is just a physical body. But Yahshua is, says, I come in my father's name. And he, hold on just a minute. He, uh, or, or actually, can you get for me John 5 and 43, please? John 5 and 43. Yes, ma'am. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. Mm -hmm. Let another come in his own name, him you will receive. Right. And, and uh, so you can see the Yah portion in Yahshua's name. Yah. Uh, Shua actually means salvation in Hebrew. So Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. And during all in the scriptures, you could you could see that uh, um, Yahshua is also giving glory to my father, uh, my father that is in heaven. Uh, my, my father is greater than me. My father, he doeth the works. And he also said that if I don't do the works, then don't believe me. <sighs> but believe me for my father's uh, sake. And uh, so uh, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just a little nervous. Uh, but uh, Yahshua. So, actually, hold on. Let me let me go to the attributes here. So we have nine major attributes, which are intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Now these are Yahweh's makeup. Yahweh is threefold, and he also chose nine major attributes, or, or he chose the cloud to symbolize, as it says in the, as we say in the moderation. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the cloud is, you know, it, it is showing his, uh, or it, I'm sorry. The, the cloud is Yah is Yahweh's uh like like what he what he chose to symbolize himself. And he chose nine major attributes, as I said. And this is his pure spirit state. Now he could have stayed in this state, you know, but everything he would have created would be abstract because he's creating by the power by the pattern of himself right but he did something about that for the love of his people to hide himself from himself to reveal himself to himself at an appointed time now yahweh means he who causes to exist now you move or he transforms from that pure spirit state into a super incorporeal shape and form seen in vision and understood in revelation. Now, when the when you're talking about Moses and you're talking about every everybody who Yahweh has shown himself to, he appears in a super incorporeal shape and form of a man known as Yahweh Elohim. Now, Elohim is the mediator between the pure spirit state and the man. Now, uh, I, 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 I know I'm not going to be too long, but let me also get uh, Exodus uh, 3 and 13, please.
Exodus 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, <clears throat> and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Now, if you were to say, Okay, now I am I'm Colin. Now, if I go to uh you know somebody i know like a family member or something and say uh and 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 they ask like colin what's your name colin you know or god what is your name god <laughs> like like it, like it, you read it in the bible right you, you know there the, you know it doesn't it doesn't make any sense but when you put in the true and correct name you say uh uh I am the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And, and, uh, you, you, like this is the first instance that Yahweh has given His name. Now, throughout the throughout, like before this period, before Moses' time, they knew him as El Shaddai. They knew him as El Elyon. They knew him as the Almighty Provider. They knew him as, you know, it, it, like they gave him various titles throughout the throughout the annals of annals of time. <clears throat> so now, you know, this is you know Yahweh in his working clothes, as the founder said. Or Yahweh in his Sunday best, and he's gonna work seven, six days rather, because he's in the rest. Now, I've I've seen, uh, you know, particular drawings of, you know, like people would, you know, put a seven, and then put a a whole row of six, uh, blocks, and then a seven in the end. So he's declaring the end right from the beginning. And he's going to cause his creation to live, to move, to have your, and to have his or her being in him. Now, you know, I, I used to draw, uh, giving you a little bit of background. I was actually born into the, into the class in the year of 1997. Now I'm I'm a I'm pretty young I'm 27, but but uh, I I I used to draw like I like I said, and you know, I, it, you know I I would say I'm like pretty average, <laughs> not too good now of course, but you know you see all these master artists you see Van Gogh you see. Uh, Cezanne, uh, you see, you know, name any artist you could think of, but you know that's a Im that's the image create creating another image. You you know they could make it look like it's moving, but one thing you can't they cannot do is cause it to live, to move, and to have its being in him. Now. Every cre every, you know, everything you could you could see you cannot see, you know, is of one or another creative expression of Yahweh Elohim. And uh, do I have five minutes, or who? Or yeah, did somebody have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but uh. But anyways, like I was saying, you know, uh, uh, creative expression, right? You so you see a dog, you see loyalty, you see lo obedience, love, you you see an elephant, you see strength and stuff, you see a lion, courage, you know, you the it goes on and on and on and on and on. That's Yahweh in those bodies that he's causing 
to have his spirit in that vessel and uh uh like he has his spirit in that vessel and you know he's going to act or the that animal is going to act with instinct that's spirit law uh, oper in operation right um it, you see a tree you see foundation you know uh, the wind you know every everything <laughs> i could i could go i could probably go on and on for you know till the class is over <laughs> really it, it just it's just so vast and so awesome you know uh but you know it i, I like it, uh, like i said you know it didn't stop when it come to when it came down to the man now man is the pinnacle of his creation he simply wrapped himself in a coat of flesh and began to breathe in this creation in his creation now uh, moses in the vision did not see anything that resembled Yahweh Elohim, but he did look at Adam, um, and he said, "Man is made in his image, Yahweh Elohim, and his likeness, Yahweh in his pure spirit." So, you know, he's so the. I mean, the, that's all I. I'll, that's all I really wanted to say, but uh, I, I I do I do love you all very much, and I hope to, you know, uh, uh, keep fellowshipping with you guys with you all again, and again. You will see me on Zoom regularly, so <laughs> definitely get used to me being around. And thank you very much for this opportunity, and I look forward to hearing from more of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Colin. Our next speaker will be Dr. Pamela Turner. Good evening, class. It's great to be here and always, you know, as always, to just take part in this teaching. And there's nothing like this. And I really enjoyed the previous speaker. Um, so, you know, this teaching is something that we don't just come down to class and sit there for two hours, kind of like the church world where they'll go to church, like it's their duty and they sit there and they think that they're doing God a favor by going down to the church and they're just putting in their time to to worship and reverence God and they've done their part for the week probably didn't learn anything and maybe they felt good because the sermon that was spoken by the preacher or priest or minister or whomever whatever denomination they were in that day so probably felt good in their heart for a, for a time and then they go back to life and then they're they proceed to be caught up in the world again so this is something that's a, just a quite a distinction with this this gospel because it's it's not something that we just come in and we just leave at you know whether it's on Zoom or in the classroom and then just go back to our life it's something that we keep and and within within us within our heart and mind all through the week and I would have to say that the reason why that is, is because that's, that's what Yahweh intended from the beginning, because we talk about how, well, we don't, I mean, we don't anything we, when I say we talk about this or we talk about that, it's, just, it's because that's what Yahweh talks about. That's what's important to him. And, you know, we learned that this, these bodies are a tabernacle and like, you know, Colin, I might reference a few things that you talked about because I, I like to kind of bounce off the previous speaker and we try to just carry the baton and, and I'll, I'll, I won't be up long either. I just want to bring out a couple basic points, but um, 
I'm always happy to just have anything to say. And even if it's short, that's fine. <laughs> that's why we're all here together as a body. Everybody can contribute something. But um, so, you know, like Colin was talking a lot about how that we're, you know, we're that well, first of all, like the creation shows forth Yahweh because it's this is, you know, like an artist he was bringing out. An artist is going to show forth something about them and it's going to be manifested everywhere. And when you don't have to get this, but we we often get Romans 119 and 20, and it's talking about, you know, something that can be known about Yahweh. Some we never knew we could actually know something for real about our creator and that it's manifested in them. Um it's talking about the children of Israel but also just in the entire creation um, being understood by the things that are made. So what Yahweh has made in his creation, also what he had man make. So he directed man to make certain things. And, and also he, you know, created his entire creation. Everything's going according to that pattern, the pattern that we learn about the tabernacle. But we also have learned through that, that our body is the tabernacle. And that's ultimately where that Holy Spirit is is going to dwell, that that he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. All of all that that has ever been is just an example to show forth the ultimate reality. And that's kind of what I, what I ultimately wanted to get at is just that, you know, how talking about how Yahweh, you know, he had to bring out a purpose that was in the physical in order for us to learn something about the spiritual and that there is a way to know something for sure. That's what I loved about this teaching from the beginning, because you, you know, you just, you can't figure this thing out. It's something that he has to reveal to you. And so you can try and try and try to figure it out, um, to study up on it. You know, there's a whole I guess, I don't even know what you would call it. I don't know. I want to say branch of Christianity, but it's not like a religion, but it's a whole um, aspect of study called apologetics in, in Christianity where they they go about to prove that Christianity is true. And so I used to read books. I'd go to the Christian bookstore and I would read books about apologetics and how to prove. And it, it's nothing, nothing close to what, I learned in this class, <laughs> nothing made sense. Nothing would, nothing really brought me to the point to where I knew for an assurity that Yahweh's real and that um, I was able to put my confidence in him and get all my questions answered like this teaching. So if we could go back and just pick up in the scripture reading where it talks about um, spirit and truth. I, I don't recall what what verse exact verse that is. Uh, John, John uh, 4 and 20. I'll pick it up at 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Uh-huh. So he's talking about true worshipers and versus that means there's got to be false ones and talking about worshiping the father in spirit and in truth. So what does that mean in spirit? And, and then it says, so keep reading there. For Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the book, the King James Version actually says God is a spirit. And all you have to do is the reason why we change it to, Yah, you know, we will say Yahweh is spirit. And, and that's because when you put this book together and when you look at the teaching in context and you learn about the Godhead and how Yahweh really is and actually exists, you come to know that there's not a spirit over here and a spirit over here that's like Colin was talking about that, you know, right, right from the get go, he said how these three are one and that, you know, he was talking about how it's just one spirit. And so Yahweh is spirit. And then he had to make himself known. And that's about that, that, that what I was talking about just a little while ago, how that he had to 
to create this, this entire purpose, which he formulated within himself before anything was created. And in order to show forth something spiritual. So, so he wants the truth. <laughs> there, there is a truth and there is a lie in other words. So we want to know what the truth is. It's not about um, what your neighbor says or what your church down on the corner, or it, it's like, there has to be, if, if Yahweh really is real, there has to be a way for him to actually prove that, that he is real. So, so worshiping in spirit and in truth means you're worshiping in a way that's not physical. And in truth is, is of course, wor worshiping the way that he intended and not, you're not following after a lie in other words. So you have, um, the way Yahweh set this up is that he, he created a people to demonstrate his purpose through, which is the nation of Israel. And let me see where I want to go with this. Um, okay, let me see. I just have to think. I just have to pause for a minute and think because um, I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, how like when you you just kind of want things to flow and you don't want to try to force it. So I just want to see where Yahweh wants me to go with this. Um, so let me talk about, okay, I'm going to just focus on the scripture a little bit. So I, I mentioned that, okay, so he's working with the people and that's really, if you, it's brilliant the way he, <laughs> he devised this thing because he can't work with the whole world. He's got to narrow things down and he's working with just a single people. And there's so many principles in, in just the nation of Israel and how he would say that they're, you know, they, they, they were the least of all people. And they, I mean, they were shepherds. They were just, they, you know, they, they ended up being in bondage to, to Egypt or to Pharaoh in Egypt. And they, the Egyptians were known to be extremely clean and they didn't like the Israelites because they smelled because they were shepherds. And I mean, just everything about them, they were the least of, of all people. They weren't like high and mighty. They weren't like the greatest nation on earth. You would think that, you know, and this is for a purpose because Yahweh is going to show forth his power. He doesn't want man to get the glory. He wants to get the glory. So he had to be working with a, a people that didn't have the ability to to do all the things, you know, and ultimately, I mean, every, everything that has happened has been, you know, according to his divine plan, you know, there's that scripture where he says, I declare the end from the beginning. And so everything is going to, is set up from the foundation, but it's got to be drawn out so that we understand him. And that's why he did it this way. And so everything was set up as a physical example to some, to show forth something spiritual ultimately. And so now that's where this brings us down to, um, you know, Yahshua. So we have in, in today's scripture reading, we have Yahshua who, who is um, of the lineage of um of the Israelites. So he's a Jew. And a lot of Christians don't know this. I didn't know this myself. I mean, everybody thinks that, well, Jesus, he's the founder of Christianity. They don't realize that he was a Hebrew and that he was from the tribe of Judah. And that, so the Jews are his people. And that at the time that he um, came in as the Messiah, as the savior, that he was walking amongst his own people and they didn't even know who he was. And there's a principle to that too, but I won't get into that. And so, so here now, here in um, John, the fourth chapter, no, I'm not really going to specifically work with this. I'm just going to work with some general things. I feel like I don't know this story well enough to pull out every little detail of, of the principles going on here, because really what's happening is, um, 
is Yahshua here. He's there was a split in the kingdom. And so they didn't have any dealings with that's why they, that is what is behind them not having dealings with the Samaritans. And so everything that Yahshua did was in fulfillment. And let I want to get I think it's in the fifth chapter. Um, let me get I want to get a couple of the scriptures where it talks about um, Yahshua's purpose. And and, and a few other things um, that are related to that. But let me get, um, I know that it's, it's Luke 24 and 25, but then there's also, um, I think there's one in John, the fifth chapter also, around where we were. Um, and, um, and near John 5 and 43. I'm just kind of looking in my book right now too. Uh, let's see here. John 539, maybe? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I knew it was around there somewhere. And then before we get that, I want to talk, I want to get more in here and, and John up a little farther because see, people people tend to look at things. Um this, this got me thinking about it in the, in John, the fourth chapter, because the Samaritan woman, sorry, I'm kind of like my, my brain's a little, I feel like I'm ADD right now, <laughs> but um, just, just pause on those scriptures. So back in John, the fourth chapter, um, I just want to highlight this. So this woman that he's talking to at the well, everything she's thinking about is physical because, you know, they, they, they had a physical law. I mean, us be just being in the, in the flesh. If we think about the physical when you, you know, when you're before you get a spiritual understanding, before you get a revelation, it, it's just all, you know, all you can, can really see and understand is what's in front of you and, and with, with your five senses, you that's, that's it. So everything is from a physical standpoint. That's why people, they don't understand that there, there can be anything outside of this physical. Everything is about your job and being somebody and getting the white picket fence and, and amassing as much money as you can. I mean, that's all that people know because they just figure, well, you know, this is it. So I might as well make the best of it. So this is where she's coming from. I mean, she just thinks that everything that he's saying is, is, is that he's talking about something physical and she can't comprehend something spiritual at this point so let's read a little bit here in john the fourth chapter with samaritan woman um you can start at um 11 john 4 and 11 the woman said unto him sir thou had nothing to draw with and the well is deep Mm -hmm. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Yeah, I should have yeah. picked it up. Sorry about that. Can you pick it up um, um, actually at 10? Okay. Um, maybe I'll pick it up at nine. Sure. Okay. John four, nine. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew, ask it drink of me, <clears throat> which I am a woman of Samaria. Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Elohim, and who it is that said to thee, Give me drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Right. Just as an aside, you know, I'm thinking this just brings me back to, you know, there was a time where in our own country, you know, there would be a different drinking fountain for someone with colored skin and somebody that was white. 
I mean, that's just crazy. You know, it's like this division and that mystery of inequity is always just, there's always going to be divisions and divisions when it comes to the, the flesh. And, and, and that's a whole other topic with that mystery of inequity, but it just made me think about that. And here they are brethren, <laughs> they're related and they don't even have anything to do with each other. And so that's why she's just like, what, you're asking me to give you a drink. And I mean, that would be like, you know, you know, back when we had, you know, just, I forget what the name, all I can think of is the word apartheid, but what did we call it um, in the U.S.? Segregation. Oh, segregation. That was the word. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the segregation. And so it's like, almost like, you know, not wanting to deal with a certain race is like, they're like subhuman or something. And, and she's, that's, that's kind of to the degree that this was, she's like, why are you even, you know, talking to me and you're going to let me like, but he's not even talking about physical. So keep, keep reading. The one, <clears throat> the woman said unto him, sir, thou had nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence then hast thou that living water mm -hmm. art thou greater than our father jacob which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle yahshua answered and said unto her whosoever drinketh of the of this water shall thirst again but whosoever Drink it of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Right. So she just can't even comprehend what he's talking about. Living water. What the heck is living water? She has no idea. And and he's talking about that the water. So this is something that is a sustenance that's beyond the flesh. It's that Holy Spirit that's going to be poured out. And that having that Holy Spirit in you is eternal life. And that's really what he's talking about. But so I just wanted to kind of highlight this, that how this is kind of the state of the world. This is the manifestation. And and um, there's other principles that can be worked with this as well. But so... And then, so now, the fact that he knew about her and was was proof to her, so she believed him just because, now that that's something. Now imagine somebody that you've never met tells you that you've been married so many times and that, but the person that you're with now, you're not married to. I mean, how would he know that? So, I mean, she just was blown away. So- but see, the thing that's beautiful about this, though, and it's it's beyond it's beyond that the the proof that Yahweh's given us and what Yahshua, what his purpose, why what he came in to accomplish and how he can prove something, it's beyond just you know making a statement. I mean, and that is that's cool. You know, the founder of this organization, he had the ability to tell people things. I mean, he could predict world events, he could heal people, but he, you know, obviously it wasn't him doing it, but it was Yahweh who was, who is um, that Holy Spirit or Yahshua really in that body who was doing all of it. And it was, he could not do any of that without permission. And he would only, he would say, I can't heal. I can't do this. I, I can't do that. But then he would, you know, go ahead and do this or that, or he would predict some event and, and, and so this is just basically showing. And so even though now those were witnesses to the people that witnessed that at that time, but that was not the ultimate witnesses. I mean, there's, there's just, you know, we're compassed about with so great a lot of witnesses and what Paul was talking about when he, when he, when he said that in Hebrews is that it, it's, it's these works. So we're going to talk about what, what some of this is and these works that Yahshua came in to finish or to fulfill that every detail of his life, everything that he did, everything he was doing here, just in this little um, scenario was fulfilling. But so let's now go to um, back into John, the fifth chapter five and 39, but we might want to pick that up. Okay. 
Yeah, I wanted to go up a little ways. Um, so let me see where I want to start. So uh, did you say six? 36. Uh, oh, 36. Sorry, I heard six. Uh, I think I want to go up a little more. I want to talk a little bit about where he. Oh, here we go. There's another that bear with. Okay, yeah, I bear witness of myself. I love this. Because Christianity, they want to go, what they call it witnessing, and they just want to go door to door, or they want to walk up to people, and they want to just tell them about Jesus, and then they've been witnessed to, and the person is then either going to choose or reject Jesus as their personal savior. And, but they don't, how do you, how can you accept a savior that you don't know anything about them? That's like somebody coming up to you and telling you they want to marry you and you, you've never, like, you have no idea who they are. You want to get to know them. You want to, you want to, you want some witnesses, right? You want to, you want some proof that they're going to be a good husband and, and you want to know that you're, that what their personality is and that they're going to actually follow through on their word and all of that. So go ahead and start reading um, at 30. Five and thirty. John five and thirty. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Right. Even Joshua doesn't have a. <laughs> a choice about what he's doing. He's just following the will of the father. I seek not mine own will. And he says, I, yeah. And that's just like that spirit that was in the founder. I can of mine own self do nothing. So it's all the, it all goes back to the father. Okay. Keep reading. For I bear witness of myself. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Okay. So what this means is, Okay, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Bearing witness of myself means if he's walking around and he's just telling people, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Messiah, believe on me, I'm the Messiah. He can't just say that he's, he, he can't just, you know, in and of itself, just talking about that he's the Messiah and trying to convince people that's not where it's at. That was not what Yahweh intended. He intended to set up a way to actually prove who he is. Okay. Now you can keep reading. There is another that beareth witness of me. And I know that the witness, which he witnessed of me, I think I missed something. I'm sorry. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Mm -hmm. there there's another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. Right. So in other words, so now he's talking about John the Baptist. There's another that beareth witness of me. Now, now see, now John just going around and talking about the Messiah is in and of itself not proof either. But... See, when, and I'm not going to get real deep into this or anything, but there's more to that whole story because we have a scenario where there's, there's, the scriptures are written about pointing to John, who's going to point out the Messiah. And we have one baptizing back under the law, who is Moses. So he, Moses says that all of Israel, they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And he was the precursor to Joshua, the son of Nun, who was ultimately the one that would bring them into Canaan's land. So now you have a repeat here. You have someone coming on the scene who is baptizing and he's paving the way for the Messiah. And he's saying that, the, you know, the kingdom is near and he's getting people, telling people to repent and to, to be baptized and, and to prepare. And that all has a reason. And then it's that in order to to bring forth um, or to prepare Israel for the, 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 now they were dead already, so they needed to repent and admit that they are dead. They had to be buried 
so that they could resurrect with the Messiah, so they could receive that Holy Spirit. And it was only Yahshua later who could bring them into Canaan's land spiritually so. So that's so there's a lot more going on to the story. It's not just a man walking around pointing to a Messiah and saying, this is the Messiah. Okay, now keep reading there. 32. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witness of me is true. Mm -hmm. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man. Right. He doesn't receive testimony from man. So that means that the Christian walking around door to door or at the mall, them just telling you about Jesus is not going to cut it. It doesn't do anything. Okay, keep reading. But these things I say that ye might be saved. Mm -hmm. He was a burning and a shining light. And ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his life. Right. But I have greater witness than that of John. Mm -hmm. But the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Right. The same. So the works which the Father hath given me to finish. Now, let me give you an example. Um, if somebody knows where this is, um, the well, can we go to the baptism where, where John's baptized and he says, thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So this is an example. This is just one little example where um, he's now water baptism was something that was set up down through the law. And it's starting with Moses. Well, even like the whole earth was inundated in water. It's down across the bottom. And then you've got a, a another type of a baptism with um, the whole world again um, with Noah's Ark. But then you have the children of Israel in the Red Sea. And so anyways, and then there was a baptism in the tabernacle as well, because there was a labor of water. And the sacrifices had to be buried in that labor. And then Yahshua has to come in and fulfill. But see, be, prior to that, like, like I said, we had John baptizing the Israelites. And that's because they were in a death-like state because everyone was dead under that law. That was a law of sin and death. Nobody was righteous. Nobody could do the law. It was impossible. So they had to be baptized or buried because <laughs> in order for something to resurrect, it has to be buried first. So now Yahshua, he's going to come in and he's going to fulfill or end baptism. And that's why John's baptizing him because he's the baptizee, if I said that right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's fulfilling being baptized or baptism. It's not, it's no longer a work of righteousness. It's no longer something. There's no more physical baptism. There will be a spiritual baptism. Um, it's actually going on right now. So does someone have that? Yes. Matthew three, and I'll pick it up at 11. Okay. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that coming after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, mm -hmm. shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Yeah, this is this is awesome too, because I don't know what, I mean, there's currently a big chunk of Christianity is performing water baptism as it's something that's required to, for salvation. And Yahshua clearly ends it. Um, I know it's not that obvious, though. See, see, we could be in the same state. Um, we could be out there in the world not realizing this. It's something that really ultimately has to be revealed. But um, and, and it's that, that mystery of iniquity just just loves just carnal ordinances, you know, rules and physical laws that he just he gets people just it's a snare, really. He gets people hung up on them. So this does have to be revealed, but once it, it's it, once it's revealed, it's incredible how you can read the same scriptures and it's right there in front of you. It says that 
he's going to baptize you. I'm baptizing you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So John the Baptist isn't around anymore, but everybody's still water, bapti water baptizing. And not to mention the fact that Yahshua ended it. And the fact that people, you know, there's already been the death and the burial and the resurrection. Now people are still burying dead. And it just doesn't make any sense. But go ahead. Now continue on there in um, 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Yeah, and the reason why he said that is because he had to ask, each person had to admit that they're a sinner before they were baptized, and that's that death. The death has to be manifested before they're buried. So when you're a sinner, you're dead under the law. So he said, I haven't sinned. So John, of course, he's, <laughs> why am, I'm not going to baptize you you need to be baptizing me. But see, he didn't understand the purpose at this point in time. Okay, so go ahead. And Yahshua answered, saying unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Yeah, so just suffer it, John. In other words, just do it anyway, because it, it becometh us or it benefits us. In mm -hmm. other, well, it's ultimately it's, it's it has, it's going to happen because Yahweh declared it and it's going <laughs> to, it has to be, it has to be. So it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Now it's not just some righteousness, it's all righteousness. And this is what Yahshua is. This is manifesting his purpose here. And I'm going to get a couple other examples, but to fulfill to end, to bring to an end, and all righteousness at that time was the if 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 you could keep that law, that was your righteousness. That was the only way to attain righteousness at that time, and that had to be brought to an end, so that the new way could could be brought in the new covenant, where Yahshua in you would be your righteousness. So, so now that's let's go back to where we were in the fifth chapter of John. John 5 and 36. I'll pick it back up if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish mm -hmm. the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Right. So the works. So I just, na I just showed you one. So this is, I mean, and there's a multitude, there's an innumerable number of things that he did from the time he was born until the time that he died. I mean, it's just an innumerable. It's just everything that he did. I mean, down to the fact that when he was born, there was a death decree, just like down with Moses in Egypt and where all the male babies were being killed. So Yahshua came in there, there had to be male babies being killed and he had to go down into Egypt. I mean, Moses was down in Egypt. There's just so many things. Um, I mean, just all throughout his life, but primarily when, I mean, the, the things that are the most prominent are when he came into his ministry and just that, like that scene with the Samaritan woman is in fulfillment, him walking on the water is in fulfillment. I mean, everything. And then the, the, the very most prominent, which I, I mean, it's just blew me away when I first heard it was how that he's pointed out as the lamb why would someone call a man a lamb? And he was the lamb of Yahweh. Well, the the other prominent lamb that Yahweh provided Israel was down in Egypt when that was going to be the method. I mean, who would think he didn't prepare armies down in Egypt with weapons and armor to get them up out of there. He provided a lamb, the most docile animal that they would kill and they would take the blood and they would put it on the do on their door and there would be four points. It wasn't just like they could have just slathered the door. They could have painted the door all, all just solid. But they specifically, it had to be four points. It had to be on the top, on each side, and at the bottom because there was a basin of blood. And that lamb had to be pierced in the side. 
Joshua was pierced in the side. When he was on the cross, there were the four points of blood. It was his hands, the crown of thorns, and then the feet were represented at the bottom. Um, he was also without spot and blemish. He was declared by Pontius Pilate that I see no fault in this man and that he was um, killed in, in, you know, that lamb had to be killed in the evening, which there was darkness when he was on the cross and um, it goes on and on. I mean, it was like the third day. I mean, there's so many things that lamb had to be buried in them when they left Egypt. So that lamb is in us to be saved spiritually. There's so, I mean, we do an extensive breakdown of the, of the parallels between uh, that lamb in Egypt and Yahshua fulfilling. So he's fulfilling every, every jot and every tittle in the law and in the prophets. Okay. So now go ahead and keep reading there in John. For uh, 37, mm -hmm. the father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither seen, heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Mm -hmm. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. Right. Okay. So he's telling them, you don't, you, you don't believe. He sent me and you don't, you don't believe him. And so, Yahweh has provided a way for us to believe. So keep reading. Mm -hmm. Ye search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And they are they which testify of me. Right. So search the scriptures. So we would have the, you know, the religious leaders at that time when Yahshua was walking around, the scribes and the Pharisees, and they would, they would just search the scriptures. They would they would believe that that was their righteousness. They they sought to know what was in there, and they they wanted. I mean, I mean, I'd like to think that they would want they wanted to know Yahweh, but they really didn't have a way to truly know Him. And how do we know that? Well, you can look at the example of um, Paul, for instance. So Paul was referred to as a learned man and he studied his whole life and he was a, called himself a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I believe that's how he put it. And he didn't truly know Yahweh or his purpose. He was completely blind, even though he had, he knew the scriptures backwards and forwards. And so it makes me think about how the founder would talk about how he knew that Bible, he, you know, where, to where he could quote us, you could quote, quote a scripture and he'd tell you the one above it and the one below it. So in other words, he knew that Bible inside and out, but he did not have an understanding. So you can have all the will, all the, all the desire in the world to want to know Yahweh. You could try and muster up to believe him with all your heart, but just like Paul, he did not have the ability to know and Yahweh just had to put it right within him. You know, so, that, you know, in Paul, just like he did in the founder. And so, so, so you can have those scriptures and you can search the scriptures and you can think that you have eternal life in them, but they are they which testify of me. And that's what has to be revealed to you. You have to see how this book is put together. Now, um, I also want to go, well, let me, let's go down to 45. 45. <clears throat> Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Uh-huh. And they trusted in Moses. I mean, they just, they worshiped Moses. Like, I mean, go ahead. <laughs> for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if right. you believe not his words, how shall ye believe my words? Right. And so I never learned about how Moses wrote about Jesus uh, all, all the time growing up in, in, in the Catholic church. And I gave you some examples uh, about how, you know, so many things about what Moses wrote about were uh, when Yahshua came in, he, he it, it was just a repetition and a repetition of those same principles that were back there. And in fact, even, you know, everything that, that they went through, uh, even down to, you know, Joshua, Joshua himself, as we, we refer to as Joshua, just for clarity, 
Joshua, the son of Nun, but that was Yahshua himself back there with Moses. So everything that was going on was, was just pointing to Yahshua, the Messiah. And so let's get Luke 24 and 25, I believe it is. Luke 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Mm -hmm. So here we have, so this is, you know, I've talked about how Yahweh has set up this purpose and that we have the, the repeating principles of, of, um, you know, death, burial, resurrection, just a couple simple examples I gave were with the children of Israel, how they were dead because they, they could not do the law. They were in a death like state. They had to be buried in, in baptism and they were going to resurrect with Yahshua. Um, also back with, when they were down in Egypt, this was manifested in several ways, but you know, we have that that death of that lamb and it was buried in them and it resurrected them up out of Egypt. And that was of all things, Yahweh's method. Talk about, talk about something that you would not, the least way you would expect to get up out of bondage. I mean, there's, there's no power when someone is in bondage there's, they have no power to get out. Um, it, it has to be. So Yahweh manifested his power and his name by, by bringing them about through the most unlikely way possible. So then when we have Yahshua coming down to fulfill this purpose, and he was going to be, he was the, the true sacrifice, and he had to undergo that death, burial, and resurrection. So this is, you know, like, just like the Samaritan woman, and she couldn't see beyond that. She was looking at physical water, and that he physically shouldn't be talking to her or her because of what was going on. And, and all of that stuff. And she couldn't comprehend. She didn't know what living water was. And just like that, these, these followers of Yahshua at this time when he appeared to them and they were sad and he had died already and, and he hadn't, you know, he, they didn't know that he had resurrected. And so this is the state that they were in. They were just, just absolutely. I mean, they believed that he was going to restore Israel as a, as a kingdom on earth, they didn't, they still didn't really understand the, the spiritual relevance of what was going on, the reality. So, so they, they kind of told them, got them up to speed on what was going on. And that's, and, and so <laughs> he said, that's why he said unto them, Oh, fools and slow of heart. No, he knew, of course he knew that they were going to be in this state. He knew that they had a carnal mind. He knew that the Holy spirit hadn't been poured out yet. And of course that they were going to respond this way. And this had to be manifested. Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So this is another way that he's showing you, look, back under the law and i'm not going to get it but isaiah 8 and 20 we get it all the time to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word there is no light or revelation of truth it says in the margin in a lot of bibles no revelation or um, revelation of understanding in them and so that's what he's talking about here so go ahead and read 26 Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Right. So he was pointing out to them, Did, haven't you seen, haven't you noticed? These are all the things, All that it, everything's been pointing to. This is what I had to go through. Go ahead. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Mm-hmm. And beginning at Moses, and this goes uh, along with what was in um, John 5 and 39, beginning at Moses and all the prophets. So that's the law. This is this is Isaiah to the law, beginning at Moses and the prophets to the testimony. He expounded unto them, expounded. That's 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 not just a couple sentences <laughs> expounded. I mean, he could go from morning till evening to uh, expounding is something that is just a deep, deep explanation. 
in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And so, you know, we have so many examples just to show that there's so much more to this teaching. I'm going to um, leave, you know, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here and leave time for another speaker. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have anything to say about this awesome teaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next speaker will be Dr. Scott Simmons. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Good evening, brethren. Um, as always, it's a pleasure to be, you know, just under the sound of this gospel. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the first two speakers and um, what they got into. And, you know, it's just, <clears throat> it, you know, just sitting in my seat, just enjoying it. You know, I didn't really have much uh much to say so I won't I won't be long but you know um you know so much was gotten into especially in in John the fourth chapter and um you know it's just you know it's just it's wonderful to be um just in this teaching like I say I'm at a loss for words right now um and I'm just I'm I'm just happy to be here and I'm just gonna Relinquish the floor. Um, all praises be to Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Dr. Charles Marshall. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the scripture reading, if you would, please. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's start at uh, verse seven, if you would, please. John four and seven. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Yahshua said unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, the Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans. The Samaritans, if you were, were what they call part of, they were the lost tribes of Israel. When Israel split up, okay, they were the, they, they were, they went off on their way and, uh, and this is after King Solomon. So they, so they're actually both Jews, but they didn't speak to each other. And uh, you know, it's like uh, brothers and sisters. You know, have fights and won't speak to each other and stuff like that. They had no dealings. The the Samaritans had uh, their way where they worshipped, and uh, uh, the Jews had where they worshipped, and they didn't get together on it. Okay, so that's that's just a basic background of that. Okay, would you read on, please? Mm -hmm. 10. Yahshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Elohim, and who it is that said unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now here he says he's going to give living water. This water that Yahshua has got is living water. Now we all know that to have life as we know it in the physical, okay, it requires water. So water is one of the things you have to have to have life as we know it in the physical. Now here he is showing forth a spiritual principle, okay, and talking about living water. Because you have to, if if you have to have water in the physical, for life, in the spirit, you also have to have water, for your spiritual being to be alive. All right. So read on. Now, I, uh, uh, scripture readers, uh, uh, I would. I'm going to want. Uh, I'm going to want. Uh, 
Genesis, the second chapter, verse seven. I'm also going to want Valley of the Dry Bones. Uh, of the Yeah, the dry, Valley of the Dry Bones. I'm going to want those two scriptures here in just a bit. Okay, so okay. could you re read on, please? 11, the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Read on. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drink thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Now remember, as we as we talk and as we preach continuously, Yahshua, everything he did is in fulfillment. And here, once again, he is fulfilling at Jacob's well. There was women at that well, and so on and so forth. We're not going to get into that story at, at this time. But... He is fulfilling, and he is fulfilling what went on back at Jacob's well. All right, read, please. Yahshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Who but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Read. But the waters that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now this water that he's going to give you is going to be towards everlasting life. Now, there is a controversy going out on right now in this earth plane from a physical standpoint. And it's when does life really begin? And uh, I'm not going to get into the abortion issue. I'm not uh, going one way or another on the abortion. That's not what I'm doing here. But there is a controversy about when does life really begin? And Yahweh has got it right here for the ministers. Now, I have heard ministers preach and teach that when, when Yahweh created Adam, that that wasn't just a piece of meat laying there on the ground, that that was... That, that was live. All right. Let's go back to Genesis 2. Genesis 2 and 7. And Yahweh Elohim formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living soul. So when Yahweh breathed that breath of life, into that man, that's when he became a living soul, mm -hmm. all right? So that is in the law. Okay, now uh, go to uh, the Valley of the Dry Bones. Ezekiel 37 and 1. Okay. Go ahead, please. Thank you. The hand of Yahweh was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahweh, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Mm -hmm. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Now these bones were dry. Okay, read. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Yahweh, Elohim, thou knowest. Now here he's asking... Now, these bones are dead. Okay, they're dry. Okay, can these bones live? And Yahweh said that he knowest. Okay. And Again. He said, Go on. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. So here he's saying to the dry bones, hear the word of Yahweh. Now, he is going to use words he's going to preach just like we do when we come down to these classes what we are doing or we are preaching or we are teaching and we're doing it either through the holy spirit or a satanic spirit see that's what we need to just that's what we discern that's what we're we're doing is listening to the words that's being spoke and these words that are being spoke down here can either give you life or not give you life. And if it is Yahshua himself, if it is Yahweh, you see, speaking through Yahshua, you understand, that is living water 
being brought, being taught to you. When I came into class, when you came into class, we were nothing more than a valley of dry bones. We thought we were alive. And from a physical standpoint, we were alive. But when we come in here, Dr. Kinley said that we were dead on arrival. We were didn't have any life in us from a spiritual standpoint. So when we come down here and we are preached or we are taught, you see, that's when we get the Holy, that's when the Holy Spirit, you see, can teach you. We That's what we come down to class for, is to be taught not by me, not by you, not by any dean, not by anyone. It is either the, a satanic spirit speaking through us or it's the Holy Spirit. And it's important that we speak and it's important that we teach and it's important that we listen to what's being said. Because a lot of us think that when we come down here, we've got the truth. Oh boy, you know, everything's cool, but you can be deceived. Listen mm -hmm. to what's being said. Okay. I'm getting off just a little bit there. But okay, these are dry bones. Okay, would you read, please? Five. Thus saith Yah Yahweh unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Now behold, I will cause breath to breathe into you, and you shall live. In other words, just like Adam, Yahweh spoke the breath of life here to these dry bones. You see, they're speaking the breath of life. Go on. I will lay sinews upon you and will bring you up and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. See, he is going to, it's when we come down here, we are being clothed. We are being clothed in righteousness. And here it's like he's saying, he's going to put the sinews upon you. Okay. Law, you know, Prophets, fulfillment, you understand, the physical creation, teaching us, giving us witnesses, laying, laying, he's giving us a body of principles, you see, to have us to come alive, to have us be alive. So, and when he does that, before we came down here, we did not know Yahweh. But once we come down here and he preaches to us, you understand? And he, he brings these things forth to us. That gives us life. Now then, uh, then another place I want to go to is, uh, I, I forgot to ask, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, I want to go to uh, Day of Pentecost in Acts. It's two and one, please. It's, is it one or two? Something like that. Uh, I want where uh, the where they received the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, Acts two and one, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, while they were all with one accord in one place, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now here. They had a sound, and it was a sound of a rushing, mighty wind. When we speak forth, you see, that is, we. it is a wind. It is, it is breath. It is air. It is oxygen. It is wind coming forth from us, okay? And they had a mighty, rushing wind, and it filled the house. And that, And the house is also like you are a house. We are a tabernacle. We are a house. This is the house that I live in. You have your own house or tabernacle. You understand that you live in. So there was a mighty rushing wind and it filled all the house. Read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and rested upon each of them. See, it was like it was a tongue. Okay. And it was tongue like fire. Now, I, I know that there's been many, many times that I have sat in this class and someone was on the floor and they were speaking and the words they spoke made, made I'm not going to say it made me hot as far as mad is concerned, but it made me hot 
You understand? It made me feel like I was on fire. You know, it's like it, it was exciting. You understand? And the words that they were speaking to me was like a mighty wind. And it was and it excited me. And it and it it enriched my soul, if you will. It brought me alive, if you will. All right. Through the preaching of this gospel. And it's like all of us come down here. And like I said before, we were dead on arrival. Now, those apostles and those people that were up there in that room at the time, you understand, they had not had the Holy Spirit yet because the Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out. Yahshua was just going through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And then after his resurrection on the day of Pentecost, that's when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, when they were filled of the Holy Spirit, they became living from a, from a spiritual standpoint. You see, even though they were there in bodies and their hearts was beating and they thought they were alive. It's just like when we came into class, our hearts were beating. We thought we were alive. But when we come down here and we heard this mighty gospel, you understand, that's what brought us life. That's what awakened us, you see, out of our slumber, out of our sleep, out of our death and burial, and see, and resurrected us into eternal life, if you will. Okay, is there, um, and it was cloven tongues, okay, and cloven was like a split, like a snake's tongue, be like the law and the prophets, you understand? It, it is just, this is just so neat when you, when you hear this, okay? Now then, read the next verse, please. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here they were filled. Now, see, after that, you see, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, they were brought to life. They were given life. Okay, now then, okay, let's go back to the scripture reading. See, John, the uh, fourth chapter. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know, here, here a while back I was sitting and I was trying to, I, I was hearing, hearing people talk about abortion and everything, and I was just wondering about it, but then what got me, what really got me was not the argument on the abortion, was when they were started saying, you know, that when does life begin? And I heard a couple of preachers preaching and teaching on it because, of course, abortion being in the news right now, they're, they're getting into it. And all of them were talking about either it, start, it, it started at conception or some were saying that it started a few weeks or this many weeks or this many in this trimester and all this kind of stuff. And I got to thinking to myself, well, wow, that's a good question. When did life really begin? And then, you know, uh, and it was actually by reading John, the four, fourth chapter, that it, it came to me that Yahshua you know, let's see, I'm, I can't find John here all of a sudden. Where am I at right here? Oh, here it is. That uh, that it came to me that when does life begin? And Yahshua was talking about here at the at the valley of the, uh, uh, at the well, at Jacob's well, that he was talking about living water. And I thought to myself, that's it. That's it right there. Now then, where is it in the law? Where is it in the prophets? Okay, go back to Adam. There it was in Adam. And I thought about the dr Valley of the Dry Bones. There it is in the Valley of the Dry Bones. You got you got law and you, you got prophets. Now, also, before we go there, also go to John, the seventh chapter. Uh, I think it's about 37. John 7 and 37. <clears throat> um, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So see, once we come to class, you see, and we believe as the scriptures hath said, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. So therefore, that's why we come to class. And that's why we listen to all the different individual speakers and all the people that get on the floor. Some have test 
testimonies, some have this. We all have different gifts. My gift isn't the same as your gift necessarily. Your gift isn't necessarily the same as my gift. I may preach from this way. You may pre preach from that way. We've all got to take in unison, teach and be able to prove what we say with law, prophets and fulfillment and also get into the be able to get into the creation to show forth you understand we all have to preach in unity and we all have to preach the gospel as it's been delivered unto us so that here like with in the uh, john the fourth chapter when he's talking about okay uh that you that uh, you have to take that uh, you have to have living water and let's see let's get it again let's see where's it at uh 13 where am I, at? I think was it 13 okay okay no wonder i was in john the fifth chapter and i was looking for it okay go ahead please thank you joshua answered and said unto her whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life let's see the physical water if we drink physical water you say, uh, i i am uh not known as a water drinker and i've had to take it especially the older i get i've had to learn how to drink water because uh i noticed that i was starting to get cramps okay i figured out what what is what is the reason why you get one can be a lack of water and since i never was a water person never did drink a lot of water I've had to start drinking more physical water because that physical water, you see, is good for my health, keeps me from getting cramps. That's the same thing with, with class, with living water. We need, and I don't care, I'm, I'm not, I don't care, I'm not getting into whether you come to a physical class, you come to a Zoom class, you watch YouTube, that's, that's I'm not getting into that. I'm just saying that you, we need to come to class in one form or another. I love coming to the physical classes because I think it's more personal. But I also love the Zoom classes because I can go to the Zoom classes and I can sit there and I can get fed all the time, anytime I want. Now, some people, we were talking earlier tonight, you see, can't really come to class all the time because of the jobs they have and the work because we have to eat. You know, we can go too far with that, but we have to eat. We have to provide for our family. You understand? But if we can't come to the physical class, you see, then like this gentleman was talking about, he can go to Zoom and mm -hmm. he can go, you know, he can go uh, to YouTube and he can get all these classes. And I think that is really, really very excellent because what you're doing is you're spreading, you're spreading the gospel. You're going around and getting the gospel spread from all over. In other words, it's like the blood is from here to there. You're being having blood placed on you over here. You're having blood placed on you over there. And by coming to these classes and doing that, you start to see the, uh, also you see the unity of these classes. As long as everyone is teaching from the law, the mm -hmm. prophets, the fulfillment, and, and and preaching according to the way Dr. Kinley gave mm -hmm. us this great teaching. And I say Dr. Kinley, not in some great awe of Dr. Kinley. It's just that Dr. Kinley received that vision. He said, make me prove it to your satisfaction. Well, he proved it to my satisfaction. I still listen to everything the man says. And when he says it in a transcript, when he says it someplace, I want to find out words in the book. You understand? You can't just go with his words. And people are always, always misinterpolating his words. You understand? One time he said in a transcript, people said, I said that. And I did say that, but I didn't say that. That, when I read that, it was like, whoa. In other words, check out what you're reading. Check out what he's saying. And he said, Dr. Kinley said, do not believe me, you see. Make me prove it. And sometimes we just take and jump on something 
and say, see, see, Dr. Kinley said his, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he was talking about. Let's see the context he was saying. You understand? And sometimes he'll say it this way, and then you read it in another transcript, and it'll say it another way. So then you see, you've got, okay, you know, which is it? You see, I tell you, we still can't just sit back and relax and think we've got this thing made. We've got to take and check each other out. We've got to check, you see, Dr. Kinley out. We've got to check out what we see and what we hear because we don't want, you see, polluted water. Now, polluted water from a physical standpoint, you see, can make you very sick and even kill you. You need clean water. And I'm telling you, we're getting less and less and less clean water in this world. And they're saying now they're finding little microbes of plastic in our water supply and all kinds, excuse me, and all kinds of other things in the water supply. So if it's out here in the physical and look at, I never thought I would ever see the day when I was a young man that they would charge you for a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't believe it when they started selling water. I mean, I thought, well, this can't be. And look at the number one thing, you understand, that is being polluted in this world today. It's the water. Now, if you see that in the physical, if you're seeing that in the physical, you know it's trying to show you something about the spiritual. We've got to be careful. We've got to listen. We've got to do our home. This is a school. This is not a church. Now, we've got a teacher here, right here in this, in these, this class tonight. And I'll bet you $100 this teacher is going to tell you that to study is very important. And I'm going to tell you how important studying is. When I was a kid and I went to school, I didn't study. And guess what? I barely got by. I, my, my whole classes were C's, D's, and F's. I didn't study. I didn't like studying. I didn't want to study. And it, has effect, it affected me from a physical standpoint as far as education and so on is concerned. To tell you the truth, I was educated in this class. I was not interested in education till I came to this class. And when I saw how these things can show me about my creator, and of course that was just Yahweh within me waking that up. It wasn't Chuck's big revelation or anything. Then I just, I understood what the importance of reading, checking things out, understanding, you see, these things, because all of these things are teaching me about my creator and teaching me about the one that, that I say I want to worship and the one that I say that I love. So if you really love someone, you're going to do what pleases them, not what pleases you. You understand? That's what the that's why marriages out here break up all the time because they they, they become they don't have a unity, they become individuals. And I want to be a unity with my creator. So therefore, I check things out and I listen to class. I come to class. It's extremely important that we keep these things. We've got to take and hold each other's arms up. We can't be bickering with each other. We've got to hold each other's arms up. You understand? We've got to take and love each other. Dr. Kinley said, though, some of the last words that he said is that we've got to love each other. Now, we talk about the children of Israel back there, how they couldn't keep those commandments. Well, look at ourselves. We were supposed to love Yahweh with all our heart and all our mind. That means it takes some real dedication because we all, all know that marriage takes real dedication. You understand? This is all the physical trying to show you something. You under, it's just at, it's, this is just a, so um, sometimes you're just speechless, you know, so it's just, this is the greatest thing that I have ever seen in my entire life. Because for the first time in my life, I can have peace and understanding 
looking at all that's going on out here. Look, they're arguing and 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 over abortion. They're arguing over the government and which what it should do and what it shouldn't do and who should be in and who shouldn't be in and who's uh, the who's who's the greatest to be the president and and you look around the world and and you look at uh, the wars going on in the world and and uh, uh, there's supposed to be uh, <laughs> rules and regulations for war. They have rules and they're breaking the rules and regulations for war. Well, when I was in Vietnam, we broke rules and regulations of war and stuff like that. War, that's what war is. And we are in a war, but we have rules and regulations and we stick by those rules and regulations. And those rules and regulations are the law. Thank you. I see that. The law, the prophets, you see, fulfillment. I know it's a broken record. The physical, the creation that we live in is all testifying. And as long as we stick to those rules and regulations, because with Yahweh, you see, these are our rules and regulations now. Back under the Old Testament, there was 613. We have two. Love Yahweh with all your heart and all your mind and love the brethren. Love each other. And we get look back at them and think, oh boy, they weren't, you know, and we have trouble keeping two of them. You see, this whole thing, this whole teaching is supposed to change our lives. Now, there's people that come down here and they hear these things. And from an academic standpoint, they can see it and understand it from an academic standpoint and even get up and teach it and teach it fluently. Run it right down. But you see, it's got to be, a, now we say it's the law and the prophets. Now you see, it's they understand this in their mind but also, you've got to understand this in your heart, because it's your heart that changes your mind, you understand? It's that love that changes your mind. It's that love of Yahweh and the love of this gospel and the love of each other that changes our hearts and our minds. Just because you can take and repeat these things, or as we like to say sometimes, Paul Parrott, just because you can Paul Parrot these things doesn't mean you have an understanding. When you know you have an understanding is when you love this gospel above anything else, including yourself. And you love Yahweh. And we love each other. That's when you know you have the Holy Spirit. And with that, I hope somebody got something out of it. And I thank you very much for the time. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Okay, we like to thank everybody for attending this Zoom class, and I hope everyone was edified. We hold Zoom classes every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m., and we hold classes in person on Fridays from 7.30 to 9.30, and on Sundays from 11 to 1 p.m. at Silo Bend, 930 Six Brittany Way, room 310 in Tampa, Florida, 33619. And we look forward to seeing you guys again. And may we please be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty dominion and power both before all time and now and ever let us all say hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah.